This episode is sponsored by The Home Depot. On today's episode, we are going to try to recreate this very bougie look of this ottoman with a bridge. The overall look is at least $7,500. I don't want to spend that. So we are going to try to make it ourselves for pennies on the dollar. And in order to do that, we are going to go get some supplies at the Home Depot. And I always love shopping at the Home Depot in person. But did you know that they have so many more options online and you can really get all of your DIY and decorating needs and the shipping is easy. Everything is easy about it. Returns, all of that super, super simple. So I had so much fun. I went and did a little bit of extra shopping because at the end of this episode, I want to try to do a little tiny living room refresh using some of the items that we picked up from the homedepot.com. What I am so impressed with about their online stuff is they actually have a ton of items to choose from so many items it's so much fun and i was able to pick up a couple of things i got a sofa table that may or may not end up behind my sofa you'll have to stay tuned to see what i end up doing with that i got some really cute gold lamps i also ordered some gold knobs to maybe switch out on the sofa table i haven't decided yet the jury's still out but you can get things like i ordered my son a foam mattress for his bed because he He's always saying that his bed is not soft enough. So I ordered that. There are so many items that you can get off of the Home Depot website. It's just amazing. I I can't sing their praises enough. I've been shopping there for years. So it's, I'm just so excited to tell you about all of the other options that you can find online. Now you're seeing this on the 23rd. They've got a huge President's Day event going on. So they've got tons of sales like that. The sofa table that I got was on a massive sale. So I will put all the links for everything that I purchased in the description box below, but make sure you go to their website, check out their President's Day sale. It's awesome. And beyond their DIY supplies make sure you also check out their home decor items because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised so check out that cell check out the links in the description box and yes let's get building are you nervous to build this don't be we're gonna do it together I'm gonna show you just how to do it and you're gonna be surprised at just how easy it is so let's do this so the first thing we're gonna do is cut out the circles that will be the basis of our ottoman I am gonna cut mine out to be 32 inches because that is the right size for the area that I'm working in but you can use these same principles and build one to whatever size works for your area. So the very first thing I want to do is find center. And since it's a square, it's a pretty easy task to do. We're gonna just take this um, piece of lumber that I've got here. You could use whatever you have on hand. And we're gonna go corner to corner and draw a line. And we're creating an X. And this will just help us find center. And then we're gonna switch and go corner to corner this way. So X marks the spot that is center for us. So now we don't need that. And what I'm gonna do is we're cutting a top and a bottom and I want to do that at the same time just to make it a little easier for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screw and screw that into center. And this is gonna help us draw our circle but also attach the two boards together. And you want to leave that poking out a little bit because we're going to attach a string and that's how we're going to go around. But to kind of hold it in place, I'm going to just also put in a couple of extra screws that we'll remove later. This is just to hold this and keep it from spinning when we cut. And since this is not going to be stained, you're not going to see any of this. It doesn't really matter. That will just keep it from moving around. Since we're doing a 32 inch circle, we're going to do 16 um, on all directions just to kind of give us a basis point, but then I'm going to show you a string technique, but this will just help us to know that we're on track and 16 inches from center because that adds up to 32. We'll do that in every direction. So we have like kind of an idea of where we're aiming for. We've got 16, 16, 16, but what we're going to do is we are going to take this string and tie a knot around this center thing and then we're going to make a slip knot as you can see that lines up 
and we'll just cut off the excess so this doesn't get in the way. Okay, that's 16. We're gonna use this. There, we hit our 16. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. Okay, and then cut that off and we are ready to cut. Okay, now we're gonna take our jigsaw and we're gonna cut around the circle. Make sure you have a fresh blade on and here we go. We're gonna just back out these screws. That was not too hard. Look at that. Now we have two round pieces for our top and bottom of our ottoman. This is awesome. So I might keep this one for the bottom just because it has the markings that might help us with our feet. And then we'll use the other one as the top. Now we need to cut some studs to create the separation and the stability in between these two pieces. So we're gonna go to the miter saw now. Okay, so we need the height. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use some scrap lumber that I got out of my scrap pile. This is like a two by four, or you could use a two by three or whatever you want. And we're gonna cut eight of them to 15 and a half inch height, because by the time you add in like the feet, the plywood circles, the batting and all of that, the end height should be around 18 to 18 and a half inches. So that's what we're going for. So we're gonna measure, and this will end up being our pattern one. So we'll get this one right. We're gonna measure 15 and a half. Don't forget to put safety glasses over your eyes because safe is sexy, ladies. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Here you can see that I've just evenly spaced these around the circle and what we're gonna do is attach the top and the bottoms to it. I'm gonna use a framing nailer just because it will work faster for me. It's very strong and I'm comfortable using that, but feel free to use a drill to screw them into place. This is the masonite. I have a bunch of scrap masonite. We are going to wrap the outside of this just so it's a little bit more sturdy. So we're gonna cut some strips down to size on my table saw. You could use a circular saw as well, jigsaw, whatever you've got handy to you. And then we are going to take our nail gun and tack it into place. I just nailed that into place and then I took some screws and also reinforced that just because it's bendable and it's very bendy but it wants to straighten back out so the screws will just ensure that it stays in place and there you have it. Now we have the frame but I wanted to have some feet and I didn't want the decorative feet to be very tall because of all of our inspiration photos of the ottoman. The feet were very low profile. What I decided to do is just take some scrap one by fours that I had and I cut them down to six inches in length and then I set them underneath our uh, ottoman on the curve and I traced the curve out because I wanted them to follow the pattern of the curved and not to be square. And this is just a little detail that I think will really elevate our piece in the end. So then I just, I actually just screwed that into this table. This, this table has been through a lot, so an extra hole is not going to kill it at this point. So I just actually 
screwed those into place while I cut out the roundedness with my jigsaw and then I sanded them up really quick to soften the edges and then I stained them and then once they were dry I added a clear coat of poly and I didn't do any stain on the top and the bottom just because I knew it was going to be sitting on the carpet and when I use gel stain I just worry about it like taking forever to dry so that's why I did it that way. Then I took a one inch foam and I cut that out to fit the top of the ottoman and just used some industrial scissors that I picked up at the Home Depot a while back and it fit really good on top of there. I did a little bit of spray adhesive to kind of hold it into place and then set that on top. Then I took some leftover batting that I had from other projects. In fact, I had to kind of piecemeal it together a little bit over the top. It was fine. And then I stapled that over the top of our foam. And then I cut off any excess so it was nice and round. And then I did the same thing with the batting on the sides just so there was a little softness to the sides as well. And then it was ready to upholster. I've kind of gotten back and forth. In our inspiration one, it was kind of a plaid color. I do like this, but my fear is, is that I will get tired of this much sooner. So I think I'll do pillows or something out of that. I think I'm going to go with this one. It looks like something more you would get from high-end designers and it's just going to be more neutral. So I'm going to go this route, but now it's time to get it on there. So then I stapled that over the top of our foam and then I used a sewing machine for the rest of it. Now you, there are ways to do this without a sewing machine. I just feel like this gives me a little bit more polished look and it's something that I'm comfortable doing. So I cut out the side panels and then I pinned it around the side to make sure it was nice and fitted. And then I put the, some clasps on it and then I sewed that together in like a circle fashion. Then I know in some of the inspiration photos that I showed of the ottoman that we were going to do, there wasn't really piping on it, but I just feel like a little bit of piping gives it a very nice finished and polished look. So I went ahead and created a little piping. It's very simple to do, just stitch, 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 stitch. And then once you have your piping ready to go, I sewed it to the top of our side panel uh, fabric. Then we were ready to attach it to our ottoman. Now I wanted it to be super even. So what I did is I lined it up. You kind of do it inside out and upside down, if that makes sense. And I took some, um, this, you can order it, upholstery cardboard, and it's just kind of like a long roll. And then you can staple it into place all the way around. And what that does is it keeps a nice even seam. So you, if you're putting staples like in different spots, it doesn't really matter because the cardboard kind of holds the shape of it and gives it a nice and polished look. So then we stapled that all the way around the top and then you can pull it back down very carefully over the bottom. And this was the moment of truth. It fit perfectly. I was super excited. Then what you're gonna do is flip your ottoman over and staple on the bottom. Just make sure that you don't over pull. There was a couple of areas I felt like I, I may have pulled the fabric a little bit too tight. You want it firm, but not like so f firm that it's like pulling funny on like the foam. So <laughs> super helpful, right? <laughs> very big. Oh dear. This next part is totally optional, but I felt like it gave it a more professional finished look. So on the bottom, I got some of that black upholstery felt that you see on a lot of bottoms of um, upholstered items. And I stapled that into place in a circular fashion. I do. I felt like it gave it more of like an official piece of furniture, even though nobody's really going to see the bottom of the ottoman. Let's be honest. Nobody's going to be flipping over your ottoman to make sure you have that black felt. So totally optional. So then I took my DIY feet that you honestly, in the end, will be surprised. They don't look like DIY. They're, they're awesome. So, and then I just screwed them into our bottom circle and I, I mean, I didn't like measure it out or anything. I just put two to four screws in each foot and made sure that they were countersunk in. You want them in deep because you don't want those scratching and catching on things. So make sure that those screws are in there nice and tight. Then our ottoman is done. Awesome. It looks 
so good at this point. The inspiration ones that I was finding were anywhere between like $900 to $1,300. How about that Ottoman build? I just love how it turned out. So I just feel like it's my personal mission to empower women to use power tools. If you've been watching my channel, you know I've been preaching this for a long time. I really wanna unlock the inner DIY goddess in you. So that's why I really want us to come together as a community. So if you are using power tools and doing a project, would you use the hashtag DIY goddess and post photos of you building things, using those power tools. Let's empower everybody together. I think that we can all ascend together and create beautiful things, improve our homes. And so I just wanna see what you're doing. So use that hashtag, again, hashtag DIY goddess on social media. We're gonna scout them out and maybe I'll feature them in upcoming episodes. And I'll definitely include those in my weekly newsletter if you haven't subscribe to that, you can pop on over to my website. It's really easy to sign up. And in those newsletters, I provide additional insight and information and feature some of your awesome projects. So let's get powerful together. Now it's time to do that infamous, very expensive bridge. Now, just as a caveat, we are using pine. The inspiration wood, I believe was an oak. You can order the oak on the Home Depot's website. So I will link that if you're interested in doing the oak, it is more expensive. So I thought we would give pine a try just to see. And if we absolutely love it, we can remake it in the oak, but we're gonna give this a try, see how it works out. I'm hoping that we can whip this out in no time flat because it's just gonna be a couple of simple straight cuts and then we're gonna do some pocket holes and then stain it. So we'll see, we'll see if we can bust this out before we lose all the light. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna cut two sides that were about 18 and a half inches tall. You're gonna wanna make sure to measure this with the ottoman that you have, just to double check. And I brought it inside, measured it, and then I put the two sides on and measured our topper on the ottoman just because I didn't wanna have any like miscalculations. I just thought it would be easy to visualize it this way and mark it, and it works great for me. So then we just cut off our top. And then we had a couple of feet of leftover. I'm gonna put it in my wood pile. I'm sure I'll find it a use for it. So for this next part, I thought about doing a pocket hole. I just didn't think this was the right application for it. This is very heavy. I just didn't think that it would work. So the method that we're gonna be using is wood dowels. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take some nails and tap them in the middle of our two by four, like so. We're gonna do like four of them. And we're not hammering them in all the way, you'll notice. This is a little hack I like to do. Okay, so we've got four in there. Okay, so then we're gonna just take some wire cutters and clip off the tip of our nails so now they're sharp and the reason this is important is because of this i'm going to show you and then you're going to line it up with where you're going to your other piece of lumber and make sure it's all square and then you're going to take a hammer and kind of tap it into place and it will make a hole on the corresponding piece okay so you can see i don't know if you can see it but i can see it there's little divots where we should make our hole for our dowels. So then you just pull out the nails, drill the holes, and then you've got your holes for your wood dowels. And then you're going to fill those holes with wood glue and a little extra on top. Wood glue, definite must on this. And then you're going to attach it to the top. And you're going to do this on both sides. So you're going to just attach them and they should line up really well if you follow that little hack and there will be no worries there. So I took another piece of wood and kind of really hammered that into place. It was nice and tight, which is what you want. It's probably a good idea to clamp it. I didn't this time. What I did do instead is on the underside of our, I call it a wood bridge, I added a couple of metal brackets on just to reinforce it. 
And that was it for like the construction portion. Then I took my sander and sanded it all down. Try to smooth it out a little bit. Maybe some of the sharp corners I sanded down a little bit. And then I used a stain and poly in one and in an espresso finish on this one and let that fully dry. Ours is not rounded. <laughs> the inspiration one is rounded and that takes a certain level of skill and craftsmanship. But to be honest with you, I love how this turned out. I think it adds, it has a very similar look for a fraction of the cost. The piece of lumber I think was about 10 or $11. We had some leftover whatever and then I had some I used a little tiny bit of stain so I'm gonna call this $12 certainly the high-end one is lovely I'm not knocking the craftsmanship of it all it's beautiful I just would never spend that kind of money and I'm perfectly happy with my $12 one now I do like it enough that down the road I may order that oak and and do it with and do an official one or maybe try a, a little higher quality of wood but honestly the overall look of this is so amazing and I cannot wait to style it. So that's what we're gonna kind of do now. Now that we've built these items, I want to do a little mini refresh on my living room. We're gonna do some new pillows. We're gonna add some curtains. We're gonna add that sofa table that we ordered off the Home Depot, the lamps and all of that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hang the curtains. I've got a really cool item that I ordered off the Home Depot. I'll show you. As you can see, I've already hung curtain rods. They already exist. So, but I've been wanting for a long time to add some shears. I just think that it adds a nice softness. So I got some shears, but on the Home Depot website, I found this little contraption and it also includes a second rod. And what it is, is I can just switch out the brackets that are holding up this curtain with these brackets and then it will hold our curtain and then it will hold our shears and then I don't have to get a new rod for there. So we're gonna hang these brackets, we're gonna hang some shears and it's gonna really soften the look in here and then we will go about doing some of our final touches. So exciting. So I originally got this table to go behind my sofa, but I decided I really would rather it be in my entryway here. There's a little bit more room for it and I think it will work better here. And it's just right next to the living room so you can kind of see it. So still kind of ties in. <laughs> so I'm gonna style this two different ways to get your opinion. You can vote which way you like better. I'm gonna start with a mirror. Okay, so option A is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more simplistic. It's got those awesome lamps we got from the Home Depot, but how about this table? Seriously, so pretty, I love it. I decided not to change the knobs on it. Liked it just the way it is, but what do we think of this look? Okay, so what do we think of option number two? This one's definitely a little bit more frilly and girly. I like this, but you'll have to let me know, option one or two.
I am just thrilled with how our little mini refresh of the living room turned out in the end. I'm thrilled with all of the pieces that I got from the Home Depot. I'm thrilled with the pieces that we made. I just am so ecstatic over this cost savings. We still have the same look, but a lot more money in our pocket. But maybe you are not in a place to build your own furniture right now, and that's totally okay because the Home Depot's home section online has you covered. So go check them out, see the awesome and affordable options that they have. And remember the President's Day sale runs through March 1st. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.